Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've got something interesting to check out today. This is a display that attaches to the back of an Xbox Series S and it turns your Series S into a portable gaming device, more or less. And right now, I've actually got it running off of this Anchor battery that has an AC outlet on it. And as you can see here, it's actually working quite well. And we're going to dive into this display and what it's all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the display with my own funds, along with the battery and the Xbox. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this screen is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at $209. They call this the UpSpec Gaming X Screen, and it is designed only to work with the Xbox Series S. It doesn't work with the X or any other device. I suppose you could get some kind of extension cable and kind of make it work for something else, but it's really designed to just plug into the back of a Series S console. And what you do here is just align the HDMI and USB mail connector with the connectors on the back of the Xbox. And the Xbox will power the display over the USB port, so you don't have to uh, have any other secondary power source, which makes this pretty easy to work with, especially if you're using a battery. Now, the other thing you have to do after attaching it to kind of reduce the strain on those connectors is to attach these little brackets here that screw into the side and that will keep it all together so you can move this around a little bit easier again without putting strain on the connectors. It also kind of gets it more secure in its position here on the Xbox itself. Now when you have this installed, the only gotcha is that you lose your Ethernet port along with one of the other USB ports as you can see here. But of course, if you're using this in a portable environment like it's designed to be, Ethernet is probably not something you would use. But of course, your Wi-Fi will continue to work. They also leave the expansion port here available for storage. And of course, the power connector here for plugging the Xbox in. Now, this is running at 1080p at 60 hertz. It does not support HDR, nor does it support variable refresh rates. So 1080p 60 is all you're going to get out of it. It's an 11.6 inch display. So a 1080p game on a small display like this actually looks very good. In fact, I would say that your 1080p games are going to look better on this small display than they might on a larger one if you're sitting up close to it. It tends to hide some of the imperfections a bit. It has stereo speakers here. The speakers are not spectacular. They're a bit on the tinny side, but they're loud enough, I suppose, for a portable environment and I would imagine good enough for a picnic table or a tent or something like that. The build quality on the display is okay. Uh, there are some imperfections that I'm noticing. So for example, there's a little bit of a gap here on the side where the plastic connects on the bezel. I don't see that on the other side. I also noticed that although this right-hand side here has a rubber foot, the left-hand side does not. But still, the plastic here matches up pretty nicely. The display keeps itself in place fairly well, and you do have a good range of motion on the display too, so you can kind of position it in the way that it works best for you. And you can also configure it so that when you close the display, it actually turns the Xbox off. And that's something you should set up. There are some instructions for doing that in the box. Another thing to note is that when you first load it up, the Xbox detects the display as only 720p. So you do have to manually set it to 1080p when you get everything configured. But beyond that, you are good to go. There are also some controls here for adjusting the display that I'll show you in a little bit. And that is pretty much it. It's very easy to get set up, relatively easy to take off again when you don't need it anymore. And I think it's kind of a neat solution here. But let's take a look and see what the display looks like. And we're going to boot it up again off my battery and have a look. So here we are running Need for Speed Heat on my battery powered Xbox Series S. And right now the battery here is powering the console and the display. I was very surprised with the brightness on this. When you set the brightness to the full setting, I think you're going to be getting about 250 nits or so, if not a little bit more. They didn't list the brightness in the specifications, at least none that I could find, but this is what it looks like to me. Much better than many of the USB portable displays that I've looked at in the past. So brightness is not a problem, I think, for most use cases. The image quality is superb, as you can see. 
It's an IPS display, so you have very good viewing angles. So if you have a friend or two joining you, I think you'll be, I'll be able to get a good image out of it. Of course, it looks best when you are dead on, but you can look off to the side here at an angle and not suffer too much from that. And the image quality here, especially with this 1080p game, looks really, really good. Much better than I expected, given my experience with some of these size displays in the past. So they picked a good panel for this, I think. And it certainly uh, does uh, a nice job here with my Series S running this game. Now, as far as input lag is concerned, it's not bad. Uh, gaming monitors are better, but I found this one to be better than some of the projectors that I have tested recently, including some name brand projectors. So there's not much image uh, processing going on here that's going to impact gameplay. And I think it's going to work well uh, on your console here. Although again, there are monitors that will do a little better. And of course your LG OLED TVs will do a little better as well. Now my methodology is that I shoot the screen at 240 frames per second with my iPad. I push a button using one of the controller testers and see how long it takes for that to get registered on screen. This one came in at around 80 milliseconds. A good gaming display using that methodology comes in at around 40 or so milliseconds. So again, not as good as a you know, higher end gaming display, but better than many of the projectors that typically come in at around 100 milliseconds or so. So for gaming, I think it's more than adequate and it's going to do well, especially because you can take this Xbox out of its home environment and basically run it anywhere in a pretty compact package. Now they do have some image quality adjustments you can make. So if you pull up the menu here, you can adjust the usual settings like the brightness and the contrast. You can also adjust the color. So you do have control over the red, green, and blue. And they also have some presets that you can do and a few other settings here as well. You'll also get a, a rundown of what your display is getting from the Xbox so you can confirm whether or not you're sending a 1080p signal or not. Now, as I mentioned, you can also set it up so that when you close the lid here, it will turn the Xbox off. So as you put the lid down, you can see the Xbox is going into its shutdown mode here right now, and it will slowly turn itself off. And this is good because you don't want to run the Xbox while the display is closed. It'll cause overheating because the Xbox's main exhaust port here is on the top. As you'll notice though, the screen will turn back on when you lift it up, but it doesn't turn the Xbox back on. So you'll still have to push the button or use your controller to boot the Xbox back up. But it's again, nice to be able to just to close the lid and pick it up and go. So how much battery life can you expect out of a portable battery system like this one? This one is the Anchor Powerhouse 100. It is a 100 watt hour battery or close to that. I think the current version of this went down to an 87 watt hour battery. Now the Xbox here at its maximum power draw will run at about 74 watts, which means that you might get an hour out of this if you're lucky. And the reason why it's not a one-to-one -one insofar as the watt hours go is that the inverter that is driving the AC outlet on here does consume some power as well. Now, of course, if you get a bigger battery, like one of the bigger anchors or a Jackery or something like that, it'll run longer. And depending on how much power your game is consuming, that will also impact things. So if you were just playing movies on this, the battery consumption would be far less than playing a game that's going to demand more out of the CPU and GPU on the Xbox. So it's really one of those things where your mileage is going to vary, and that will depend upon what you're doing with the Xbox and how big your battery is. But it's pretty cool just to have you know, this with you. This is it, plus the controller, and you can basically run your Xbox anywhere, so long as your battery has some juice in it. And of course, you could power this off of an inverter in a car and be able to run it for a lot longer. So overall, I think the build quality on the display could be a little bit better just from the fit and finish side of things, but the display itself is a nice gaming display. It really integrates well with the Series S. In fact, it feels like a different product when I have it attached here. Once you get those little hooks there on the side installed, it does hold itself together quite securely. And it really kind of feels like a little Xbox laptop that you can take with you. And if you've got a vehicle inverter or a battery, you can pretty much play with your Xbox anywhere. Just tether it up to your phone or whatever if you need to get online. So all in, pretty cool little device here. It would have been neat to see this for some of the other Xboxes with the DVD drive so you could play some of your physical games. But if you have some loaded up on your Xbox, 
this might be a fun way to take games on the road. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.